Welcome to Coding Off the Work stream. Another day, another stream. Yeah. But before we bring in our guest, we would like to take a moment to thank our sponsors. The first one is Progress Telerik. Now, Telerik supports the developer community with, for example, sponsoring events like these. The other sponsor we have is 1337 or 1337. Thank you so much for helping us do things like this. Today, we are starting a new series of public speaking or presentation skills, if you will. We will return to this topic in the future, talking about public speaking and how to get started and improving your skills. In this first episode, uh, we bring in two guests. One who is fairly new to pub as a pub public speaker and one who has done it for a while and compare notes between them. Welcome, Stacey Cashmore and Jessica Engstrom. I'm a guest. I'm a guest. You're a guest. <laughs> <laughs> I'm hey you're there. a guest. Hey. <laughs> How are you? Not too bad. It's, uh, it's not starting bad. to warm up here, so it's uh, it, it's we're starting to not freeze. <laughs> oh, I long for those days. <laughs> <laughs> Still too cold for me here. Yeah. It's, a, every, it's still every seems year. really weird. It's three days ago we were skating on ponds, and today I walked past a pond and it was water. Oh, really? That fast? Wow. So we did, did hear some really spring birds the other day. Did we? Yeah. <laughs> but I think they're confused. Yeah. They're like, damn it, give us spring. <laughs> <laughs> or that might have been me. Not sure. <laughs> Bit of both. Yeah, the cat sing. Packing. There you go. There you yeah. go. <laughs> yeah, the, the cat spent the last week inside. You open the door and he just like runs to the door, stops at the cold and goes, no. Nope. And now he's outside <laughs> enjoying the sun and doesn't want to come back in again. <laughs> and he can watch the birds. And he can watch the birds. Oh, nice. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, Stacey... You are fairly new at being a speaker. I'm not really sure I can say that anymore because mm. you've done so much over the last couple of years. But how come you did become became a speaker? <laughs> I always have to laugh when I'm asked that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's a well, funny it's, story. It is. It's, it's, I love the story. I mean, it was back in mm. 2018 and I was in quite a bad place. Honestly, it does get better. And it was <laughs> Techorama NL. And it was the first year that it was held. And I really wanted to go, even though I knew that it was going to totally trigger my anxiety. And I went. I got there ridiculously early because I wanted to not get there late. And I was slowly climbing the walls, getting stressed. And after the first two sessions, just... Well, you know Techorama. It's in a cinema, and it's a big cinema, but it's a big cinema for individual cinemas to empty one at a time. And when you've got a 1,000 people piling out of all of the cinemas at once, it gets a bit crowded. And Yeah, very. I, I had a total panic attack. I was back against the wall, arms in front of my face, and I lost it. And I managed to recover, got into one of the cinemas that was empty between the sessions and calmed down. But I didn't want that to be my memory of the event. I wanted to do something because otherwise I might not have come back on day two. And I love swing dresses and it's what I normally wear. But that day, because conference and practicality, I was just in jeans and T-shirt. But I'd seen somebody in this fantastic fantastic swing dress with petticoat. I thought, right, I'm going to give that person a compliment. It's not something I can do really easily. I always feel like I'm being, I don't know, such a stalky creep if I try and give a compliment. <laughs> so I'm, I'm going to give this person a compliment. And at the end of the first day, washing my hands, there's this person standing next to me. 
And it's not an attendee, it's a speaker, Jessica, <laughs> which just triggered the stress even more because now I'm not talking to an MD <laughs> attendee, I'm talking to a speaker. And sorry about I managed... that. <laughs> <laughs> I managed to give the compliment. And if I remember rightly, it was kind of like a deep breath. And I've just got to say that outfit's fantastic. And then we had a little chat. And I thought that was that. Then the next morning, I am now in full swing dress because I thought, well, if one person can do it, I'm just going to dress in the way that makes me comfortable and gives me the most energy for a difficult day. I'm walking from the car park to the cinema. Some guy runs up behind me and taps me on the shoulder. It's, I'm really sorry, but I just want to say, your session yesterday was fantastic. What's that? Sorry. I know exactly who you mean, but it's not me. <laughs> but tell you what, I'll send her a tweet and pass on your compliment. And you tweeted back and said, well, yeah, I'm in jeans and T-shirt today because I only brought one dress, but can't wait to see what your outfit's like. I'll see you over breakfast. And I thought you're being polite. And no, whilst I'm eating breakfast, you and Jimmy come up and we start talking about tech, anxiety. And you asked whether or not I'd considered doing any speaking. And I went, no, I, I, I don't <laughs> at conferences. I don't speak at conferences. And well, you suggested that maybe with the passion I was talking about the topic, I should give it a try and uh, apply for Sveta because, hey, it's in a different country. Even if you do a really bad job, <laughs> nobody there knows you. You're never going to see them again. Perfect opportunity. And so, yeah, I applied, never expecting to get picked. But, uh, yeah, I, I got picked and, well, the, the rest is kind of like two and a bit years of history now. It's uh, giving you that compliment has absolutely done wonders for me. It's all about a dress and a compliment in a bathroom. <laughs> it's so it's so bizarre when you think about it. I, I don't know how. <laughs> but yeah, you were talking with such passion about what you do. And I also happen to know that speaking is basically a monologue. You are not speaking to a lot of people. And if you don't want to, you don't have to take questions. That's totally up to you. And and some people, I think, tend to forget that it's actually a monologue. Um, so I think it's very suited for, for introverts. Yeah. I'm surprised how many of the big speakers, if you will, who are introverts. Yeah. Basically all of them. Yeah, there's a few who's, who isn't. <laughs> But yeah, it's it's a lot. We call him Magnus. <laughs> Shout out to Magnus. <laughs> yeah, he's not an introvert. No. So you have been an MVP for seven years now. I How have. did you get started? Uh, well, the first time I was on stage, a colleague just pushed me on stage and said, Hey, uh, by the way, can you demo this game? <laughs> Oh, I did a terrible job. It was not fun. I did not know what I was doing. The camera wasn't working. That was not when I got hooked uh, <laughs> at all. But I was very, or we were very active in the developer community. We did uh, events and, and all sorts of things, hackathons and, and meetups. And um, I mean, we, we really love the community. And then I was invited to join a group called Meet or Microsoft Extended Expert Team. And they had speaker trainer, a speaker trainer called David Phillips. Now they had plenty of speaker trainers. Uh, we've been trained by a lot of people, but what set David apart from the others was that he gave you the why. Why do you need to do this? Why are we supposed to do this or that? And that kind of resonates very well with me because I want to know why. And if I have the reason, I might do it. If I don't have any reason, it's like when your mom, sorry if you're watching, <laughs> tells you to make the bed, but she doesn't tell you why. Uh, yeah, there she is. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. But I think when I got the why and I could... 
well, I, I got hooked from that moment. And uh, from 2013, I think I did my first uh, conference and then I became an MVP the year after. It was crazy. It just I, I basically did what you did. Spoke everywhere because it's so much fun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And so I've got to admit, it's applying. The CFPs are absolutely not fun. That's confronting as anything. But, yeah. oh, the speaking yeah. part is fantastic. Yeah. Writing a bio, a presentation about yourself. Uh. <laughs> no, I feel That's sick. That's not okay. No, I feel sick no. every time because I feel <laughs> yeah. like, oh, look at me. I'm so good, but yes. I'm not. I don't even believe what I'm writing. So usually I send it over to Jimmy and he's like, yeah. <laughs> Let's see if we can spice this yeah. up. <laughs> that, that, that's good to have someone else actually write your bio for you if that's an issue. <laughs> it's way easier as it well is, it for, is. for both of us. Yeah. So let's say that we are starting a new presentation. What is the first thing you do, Stacy? The first thing that I try and do when I'm giving a new presentation is try and figure out what do I want the message to be? That's it's uh, I, I try and build everything out from there. When it's for the first one that I did for Svetuk, am I pronouncing that right? I've been practicing. Yeah, <laughs> you're doing a great job. <laughs> um, but for that talk, it was total panic because it, it went from the euphoria one night of I've been selected OMG to the next morning I've been selected <laughs> OMG um, and I couldn't think of anything at that point the only thing that I could find is like I, I'm not worthy to talk about anything I'm, I'm, I'm a nobody I have no idea what I'm doing imposter syndrome central and it kind of, it just came to me. I can talk about failures and how, not so much of how to cope with failures, but how to learn from the failures. And like, right, that that's a subject I can go with. It's also one that I can live with. I don't feel that I'm talking about something I don't know anything about because I've had enough failures. And <laughs> making it my story means that I'm not going to run the risk of somebody in the audience going, no, 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 that's not how you use that technology. It's just yeah. about how I dealt with it. And well, hopefully it resonates with people, but it's just how I dealt with it. So that, that's kind of like my first point. What, what is that message that I want to bring over? And then try and write just a, a brief outline. So a, a little bit of an arc, maybe just like chapter headings. To, to kind of get me into that flow that I can look at. It's, it's that, that's got a flow to it that I can go with. I, I'm not boring myself when I read it, which <laughs> did happen the, the first time I wrote something. <laughs> I, I started it totally different. I actually started it trying to do everything perfect from the start. Mm. And after hours of trying to do this, I read back what I got. And within five minutes, I was bored. And I thought, well, this isn't good. If I'm bored, poor audience having to listen to this. Um, and that's when I found a load of YouTube videos, how not to bore people with your introduction. That Literally, that's what I Googled. How not to bore people with introductions. And I learned that moving my introduction from the beginning of my talk and putting it after the introduction to the talk does wonders and keep it as short as possible. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, I, I kind of learned to build up my talk in that way. And from that point on, I stopped trying to do everything perfectly and started just trying to make sure that I had the minimum viable product of a talk, <laughs> even if it's not perfect, and then try and iteratively improve it as I went along. And I always That's try good. and do the talks without any slides. The, the slides are kind of always my afterthought. Hmm. Yeah. What about you? Uh, well, <laughs> basically what she said. But I, I call it main parts and then I break them down into chapters. And then I break the chapters down even further. 
Um, but I also have to uh, brace myself or pace myself or time box myself because I also want to make it perfect. And there's no way I will make it perfect the way that I want it to be. I, I will never agree to something is good when, when I do it because perfectionist. Uh, mm -hmm. So so just like you said, with the, with a minimal viable uh, product, uh, that is so much easier to work with. Better have just blank slides and and just the the topics than than actually spending fourteen days finding that picture. And yes, I have done that. I know. I have done that <laughs> so many times. I remember when I was doing one of my talks. I think the first time I did it was at Svetug, uh, like like you. Um, I was doing a design for developers, I believe it was called, and I was going to talk very briefly about colors and then font faces, uh, typefaces, and, and, and a lot of stuff. And that part was probably going to be like a minute each, maximum. I probably have research about typefaces that can last me for two weeks. For one minute, two slides. <laughs> so yeah, time boxing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And and one of the sessions that you did um, talking about UX, you said um, a bunch of times. Okay, I'm done with this one. This is the yeah. last time I do this session. Yeah. And every time someone comes up to you and says, "Great session. I learned so much yeah. about whatever it was." Yeah. Every, it's especially one talk that happens every single time. And I actually teach that at schools as well. And teaching it, I'm fine with. But the talk, I think that people will get bored or people already know this. And I'm cheating or I've already <laughs> done a version of this. And this is a new ver version, but still, it's the same. Yeah, but people still come and you have changed everything for me. Like, damn it, okay, I will do it again. Maybe it's not that bad. Maybe it's in my head. <laughs> no, so it, but it, you have it's a picture a fantastic to show as well. Speaking to Gant. Yeah, it is. Which one? Yeah, you have that picture. I this know one. you I know the picture. This <gasps> is from your first talk. That and is the from room my first talk. Was, yeah, it was so full. That terrified me. It was Yeah. <laughs> I think I, I, there was people standing as well. It was uh, you, it shocked me. It, it's but a, you, I really you did so well. After when there was about twenty five percent of the room full, I was kind of like, "This is good." I, I can. It, it's not empty. <laughs> not too many people. This is good. And a few people from the speaker room came to join to encourage me. The speaker community is just. Absolutely awesome. And the group of speakers yeah. at Svetog is just truly awesome. And mm. uh, then it got to like half full and it was, okay, this is getting real now. And then once it was <laughs> full, full, it was just, why are these people here? <laughs> it's, uh, you're right back to the, who am I to think I can talk to a room full yeah. of people? It's... Ah, but yeah, once I said every those single words. talk. <laughs> yes. Every single talk. It, and it I, I still can't way. believe. Yeah. And I still can't believe. Imagine being at Build or Ignite, having a session there. And there's people coming in. <laughs> and there's people watching online. Like, why? <laughs> <laughs> These are things you should already know. <laughs> well... <laughs> Yeah, it's uh, it never. I don't think it never goes uh, ever goes away. Yeah. If if you have that type of of personality, I think this will haunt us forever. <laughs> but as you said, as soon as you say your first sentence, everything is fine. Yeah, at that point it all goes. Yeah. It's uh, the, the same for online talks. It's um, every time I'm ready to give an online talk, I'll stand here and it's okay. It's coming. And then, yeah, you, you say that first word and it's just like it goes. Mm -hmm. And you're just totally... The room disappears when 
when I'm here behind the camera, I don't see the camera anymore. The room just disappears. It's fantastic. Hmm. It is. Now, when you get started, someone, some say that you should not use or you should use a non-digital platform to get started with your talk. Do you use that or do you use some kind of digital platform? Uh, I mix it up. It's, uh, and it, it depends what mood I'm in as much as anything else. Hmm. It's uh, sometimes I will use this and just try and jot stuff down. Sometimes I'll just use a notebook. Uh, sometimes I just open a markdown file. <laughs> and it's all of my talks are either in Azure DevOps or GitHub. And I'll just open That's a good. markdown file there to actually just so you can see them back in the wiki. And when I'm in that mode, I do kind of the same as Jessica said. It's uh, you know, the title, what I'm trying to achieve, then the chapters, and then bullet points, and then break the bullet points out into actually something useful. What about you? Well, I think you have a picture of, I do of the process picture. as well, where our cat Sputnik is actually trying to help us. So the green ones here are uh, the sections and, and the pink ones are the chapters and then the others are the points I want to make in that chapter. Uh, however, this is how I used to do it. Um, however, I think whatever you're more comfortable with is the one you should go with. Yeah. Nowadays, I usually do it in PowerPoint because I'm very familiar with PowerPoint. I know how it works. Sometimes I use OneNote, which is uh, another program I'm very used to working with. I know how it works. I don't have to put up the post-it notes. I, I know how I can do um, these sections and slide sorting and, and all of that stuff. But if you're not used to PowerPoint or OneNote, do something else. Like you use Markup uh, or DevOps, you're used to that, then you're good at it. You, don't, you won't have that threshold of trying to learn something extra. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> while you're you're writing your talk, I would say. I think the reason why people say that you should use a whiteboard or a non-digital platform is that you shouldn't be tempted to have PowerPoints for everything. As, as yeah. Stacy, as you said, you, you do the PowerPoints afterwards and you may or may not need them. And I think you you know when to use a PowerPoint and not use a PowerPoint. Yeah. So it... it it demands a little bit of, of um, discipline. Yeah, and, and I think usually if you put too much useful stuff in your PowerPoint, you're doing it wrong. And and I mean, all respect to the people who do, does that, but I don't mm. because it's not the PowerPoint that is a presentation. If that is all you need, I can just put it on the blog and you can go read it there. You're there to listen to me and my experience in whatever topic uh, or who, whoever you're listening to. So if you can make use out of my PowerPoint afterwards, I will be surprised. <laughs> I, I have you, that feeling too. Yeah, uh, no, you have beautiful photographies. No, but <laughs> <laughs> I actually understood that because I've seen them. <laughs> you usually use beautiful photography. Whereas I used stuff like um, Pinkie Pie throwing up and, and uh, pink superheroes. And I've had My Little Ponies. Yeah, I just said My Little Ponies. I have like symbolic stuff that is of no use at all afterwards, but it's funny. So it yeah. should be more like a complimentary thing to the talk, I think, which makes it a lot easier uh, and harder because we need to find the pictures that is perfect. Yes. And I'm running out. There's I need no to go session. on a photography yeah. trip again. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so the next cute. question is a little bit... <laughs> 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 so the next question is a little bit controversial. <laughs> Finish the presentation before or mm. after submitting it? Uh, <laughs> I would say it depends on how you cope with stress and how much of a perfectionist you are. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> because if you submit it before you're 100% done, which I will never be, you get that push, you need to finish it. 
But if you do that too many times or with too many sessions, you will end up with a crappy presentation. So if you're fine with no slides at all, go for it. But I, I, I usually have something at least started the whole thing, maybe not every single um, slide ready, but at least the have the idea before. Yeah, at least the yeah. chapters. I think it's uh, what, what ex about you? except for my first one, which I applied never expecting to be picked. So I just desperately <laughs> tried to think of an abstract more than anything else. Um, if I'm applying for one of my talks and I try and get the talk done first, <clears throat> just because I need to practice. I need to practice to get my, what's the word I'm looking for? For me to accept that I know what I'm doing, I need to practice mm. it a lot. I think that first talk at Svetug, I think there's about 400 hours in that talk by the time I gave mm. it. <laughs> and yes. so for a talk that I'm giving, I kind of do that. On the other hand, over the last year or so, I've been asked to give a few talks and that's rather less time. And it's, do you fancy giving a talk on such and such? The conference is in six weeks. <laughs> and I kind of challenge myself to say yes, rather than no, 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 no. Uh, <laughs> and it, it's kind of working. So, but I, if I'm actually applying, I think that's a different mindset. If I'm applying for a talk, then I'm really trying to go to someone and say, look, pick me. This is awesome. And in which case I really want it to be awesome before I start. And if somebody's come to me and say, we'd like you to talk at this, hmm. then it's more of a, well, if I have something I can just give, then I will. And if I've got to write one from scratch, then so be it. I have to do the best that I can do. And for the last two talks that I've done, I actually didn't have any slides at all. It's, hmm. um, I did the one for the .NET front end day. It's a half an hour talk. It's 25 minutes of demos. It's not even worth me opening PowerPoint just for an introduction. <laughs> so I did cheat. I say I didn't have any slides, but I put actually an end slide as a background for my desktop so I could just minimize everything at the end <laughs> and people could have the QR code to go to the uh, MS Learn. Uh, and the other one that I did was for She Sharp in the Netherlands. And that was talking about how I got into speaking, the long version. And I thought, well, I can't think of any pictures that go with this. And this, this is my story. And why am I putting pictures on the screen and me in a little box in the corner if this is my story? So I just totally did mm. no slides with that at all. I didn't even bother trying. Yep, that's and, Which and does help you when you're trying it... to write the talk. It, it is less pressure yeah, of course. than having yeah, to do you it. You don't have to find that perfect <laughs> image. And I also think you touched a, a good point as well. If there's only a couple of weeks left before the session, I will not submit an unfinished talk. But if it's like six months in, in the future, I might. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, that's, uh, that's a good point. So what are some of, what are some of the things we should watch out for? traps you might fall into <laughs> research <laughs> for me it's research choosing images uh the right font whatever i can sit forever literally forever <laughs> finding one picture out of 200 yep uh, i know you, yeah, you've got to so find I the one that's perfect box. Yeah, you, you find one which is no really such perfect, thing. and you just carry on looking. And if you can't find the perfect one, case. you then also can't find the nearly perfect one anymore either. <laughs> no, exactly, because you have too many. That that's me every single time. Yeah. Um, uh, what about you, Stacey? My big one that I learned originally was relying too much on PowerPoint. It's mm. the video from. I always forget his name properly. David Phillips. Yeah. Yeah. Woo. Death by PowerPoint. 
Yeah, death by PowerPoint. Anybody wanting to do any presentation, watch that twice before you start. Yeah, uh, I watched that and I deleted most of the content of my slides. Mm. Yeah. And, and his I, point I, is you are the presentation, yeah. not the PowerPoint. The PowerPoint is an aid to you, not the other yeah. way around. Hmm. And not, not and it putting makes such, more, such sense. Yeah. And it's making sure that it's the right contrast so that it doesn't drown you out. And mm. he does the wonderful one with counting the dots. Mm. Mm. And it's like, okay, so how many dots are on the screen? Yeah, one, two, three, four, five. And you get to six and there's like a two, three second wait. And it's like, yeah, because more than five, people have to start looking and counting and you've just lost them because they're not listening to you anymore. Yeah, and we need to yeah, it's, look at whatever is on the screen, which yeah. is why it's interesting that a lot of people still have their logo, the date, the number of the slide, how many slides are left, and God knows what. You're already, if you put one sentence, you're already over. Yeah. And why do we need to know what date it is today? Because that change, it's not when the slide deck was done, it is literally what day it is today. I was entirely sure that that was when the slide yeah. was done. Because that would make sense. Yeah. The, oh, this is mm -hmm. an old slide or yeah. whatever, dating the slide. But when I figured out, wait a minute, th this is today's date. Yeah. What? What? Why? <laughs> it just looks it up. It's, yeah. yeah. And, and how many slides... You have shown and how many are left that is also of no use because then you will get the audience into okay so she has a hundred slides and we're only on slide 20 mm -hmm. but they don't realize that maybe three of the slides are the same but they don't see that because i have yeah. notes and stuff so they might actually be identical or things like just images that takes 10 seconds and then we switch the slide we, we had a, um, an interesting discussion at, um, uh, I think it was at Ignite when we did um, speaker training there. Yep. Um, so, so we had a, I think they call it meetup, but it wasn't a meetup. So, so we and a couple of friends were, were doing speaker training for, for people. And, and the discussion came up just about that. How many slides can you have in a presentation? And I think it was an hour presentation. You could have a maximum of um, 20 slides. And I was like, what does that tell you? Well, you have 30 seconds per slide, so you know how long... I think about three minutes per slide. Was or it something. three minutes? It, it was a really long time to wow. talk about yeah, the same Yeah, that might thing. be... Yeah, because yeah. it was an hour, yeah. so three minutes uh, per slide. Oh, look at me. Yeah, you did math. <laughs> I know. Congratulations. <laughs> Correctly, I think. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and I was like, what do you mean you have three minutes per slide? It's not timed. You... You do the, you do you you press the clicker when you're ready, and he's like, no no no, we cannot we do not allow any more slides in our company because it will take too long, and I, I was like, okay, so I have a talk here at Ignite and I have 242 <laughs> slides, and he's like, well, how are you going to do that in an hour? Well, click 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 <laughs> in my click. own time. It's just images. It's yeah, and, and they had they had two points one point was well every slide should be three minutes yeah and the other point was the slide number should be visible because then the person who are managing the room could say hey you're you're a little bit behind or you're a little bit uh, too early so they can control the presentation they could control the presentation oh my not word, the person please, no. on stage yeah <laughs> i know oh you're five <laughs> slides in so you should be at the 15 minutes mark but you're in 20 uh oh slow down <laughs> they Hurry could up. They, they would never be able to handle any of my slide decks because i al <laughs> always have over 100 even yep. if it doesn't show M many of them are blank so you don't even know but yeah, yeah. i found yeah, I that feel... very I think my slide deck for Svetuk, my first one was about 130. Yeah. And you couldn't tell. Yeah. I mean, like you say, right. there's so many that are the same. 
It, it, it's yeah. notes, yeah. it's keeping you going. And some of them are you flash it up, you do a quick talk, it's like, nope, that didn't happen. And you, <laughs> yeah, you, you use it exactly. to kind of click. Yeah, exactly. So we have the last topic of the day. For anyone who are curious about getting started, how do you know what to talk about? And do you have to be an expert on the topic? What do you Absol think, Stacey? Absolutely not. You, you really don't need to be an expert. And I have learned so much by giving talks on something that I'm not an expert in. Um, my the blazer talk that I did at .NET front end, it was something I wanted to do. I've been wanting to play with it for an age, but never quite had that push. I said, okay, so I can give a talk on this and then I have to learn. Not only have I got to learn, I've got to see it, what can go wrong when you do it so that I can show people that too. Um, so no, it's fine. Just find something that you're interested in and do your journey. It's if you're a beginner, you know what? There are millions of beginners out there that also need to see that part of the journey. Watching, um, oh, what's his name? Bart de Smit, Bart de Smet from Microsoft in Belgium. His six six six, as he calls it, level talks. I adore them. I it's mind blowing. It's watching that guy talk is amazing. I'm never going to give a talk like that ever, ever, ever in my life. <laughs> but I can give a talk that can maybe get somebody started. So it's, we need all of the levels. We need the introductory. We need the intermediate. And for the real deep dives, as much as letting people know just for the sheer entertainment of watching somebody also do pull requests for white spaces because he's not happy when he opens code in the middle of a presentation, you need those people <laughs> too. Yeah. And, and like Stacy said before, tell your story. How yeah. did you use Blazor, for instance, in, in not this is black and white how Blazor works. Tell your story um, because it doesn't matter if there's a hundred people in the room that are Blazor expert, they will not be better at telling your story ever. True. So kind of takes away from, from the anxiety and, and uh, <laughs> the imposter syndrome as well, because nobody yeah. is better at your story than you are. Absolutely. Right. We are about about on time, actually awesome. a little bit late for for our half hour. <laughs> <laughs> but we had so much fun. We did. It we is. did. And we hope we sparked some interest in uh, the world of, of speaking. Because it is awesome. It is. <laughs> and it as is. we said and in the beginning. I'm sorry, continue. I was, I was going to say, for anybody that is interested in it, I believe it's this weekend, the Global Diversity CFB Day. February the yep. 20th, and I went there last year, and I think it was last year. might have been the year before, but I went there when we could go, and <laughs> it was a really superb day. It, was, uh, it, it helped me a lot. It introduced me to some great people, too, and it is online this year, obviously, but I, I'm sure they've got lots of great sessions set up, and so I'm not affiliated with them. I'm just going from experience, <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Yeah. And as we mentioned, we're going to continue this series with with the uh, presentation skills or or speaker training or whatever you want to call it. So, until next time. Until next time. Bye-bye. Bye. Thanks. <laughs>